I have here two examples of resorbable hemostatic agents that you could place into a socket after an extraction. Now, this here is a coliplug, and these ones, of course, are the gel foam sponges. So if you have a bleed that's difficult to manage, or maybe you're getting more bleeding than you'd think you should be getting after an extraction, patient may be someone who has a bleeding history or they're taking some blood thinners, then it may be a good indication to place one of these. Now, coliplugs are what I use in my office for several reasons. One reason, and probably the main reason, is I really like the shape of them. And the shape of them basically adapts very nicely to just about any tooth socket. So if you take a look at this, say this upper second premolar site, what's going to fit better into that round hole? This cube here or this cylindrical object. I've never understood why gel foam comes as squares. Now I know that you can squish it and you can ball it up and get it in there, but it's more difficult to work with than would be a coliplug. Now the other thing is when you take something and you put it into a site that's maybe bleeding at a fairly moderate pace and you're trying to get it sutured over and get some pressure on it, then coliplugs again are way easier to work with. If you put a gel foam sponge in there, you're going to drop it in. If you don't pack it immediately, it basically starts to liquefy and you're trying to pack it and it's just splitting apart and breaking down before you can even get it in there. So I don't really like to work with that. I like to work with the coliplugs which hold their integrity. You can pack them in. They stay together for a good amount of time to allow you to get some good pressure on it into the socket and usually they just act as a tamponade to basically block that bleeding so it really really works very very well. Coloplugs are made of collagen so the way that collagen works is in your vessels you have a uh, layer of collagen so this is in the basement membrane and when that vessel's broken or it's uh, damaged that collagen is exposed. Now collagen acts as an activator for platelets. So you could think of it almost like Velcro for platelets. So it's going to start to activate these platelets and make them grab on. And as they grab on, they're going to release chemicals that are then going to recruit more platelets. So they're releasing ADP and thromboxane, which are going to help to get that clot forming and get that platelet plug formed to stop the bleeding. So if you have a big block of collagen here, that's essentially what's going on. Uh, the blood is entering there, platelets are getting in there, and they're being activated to form that big giant platelet plug, which is going to eventually be basically the whole of this collar plug. Now that will get resorbed and become part of the clot and part of the healing process over time. Now, gel foam is something where the people who made it don't even really understand how it works. And that sounds kind of ridiculous, but they really don't. So they have postulated that what happens is platelets enter this stuff and they are damaged slightly, which causes them to release some chemicals, which then activates platelets and helps to form that platelet plug and get that clot forming. They also think that basically it just works because it can absorb a massive amount of fluid. So basically it can take up 45 times its own weight in blood and it can hold it there. So it's basically a super absorbent sponge and they think a side effect like I said is the activation of platelets. Now if you like to use gel foam maybe that's what you got and you want to use it and you do have topical thrombin in your office Gel foam can be used in combination with topical thrombin. So basically you dip it in that thrombin, you're going to squeeze it out to kind of get all the air bubbles out and then resaturate it and place it within the socket. That is going to dramatically speed the clotting process.